Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you're new to this series, we built this five acre pond over the past year, and it took us several months to get all of the dirt excavated, and we had to bring in several truckloads of clay, and we also built an island, a dock, and got all the structure in place, and then it took a couple of months to get it full of water. After that, we stocked it with a bunch of bait fish, including bluegills and threadfin shad, and not long after that, we stocked it with these little two inch aggressive bass. And we're going to be giving you an update on them here in just a minute. But first, we have a quick announcement. We hit the 1 million subscriber mark on New Year's Eve. So I wanted to take a second to say thanks to each and every one of you. A lot of you joined up during this pond build series. And some of you have been around since we were just a fishing channel. But I wanted to say thanks because you all have given me one of the most valuable things we have in life. Which is your time. And during the 5 acre pond build, I kind of knew what to expect with the fish side of things. But I was very surprised at all the wildlife that stopped by and made the new pond their home. And in turn, people from all over the globe joined in and watched. And a lot of the thoughts and ideas and things you see in these videos come from you guys. And I'm very happy about the community we created because I've learned a ton of information through reading the comments and all the engagement with you over the past few years. So I feel like this is something we all built together, and I'll always be thankful for that. And I'm also looking forward to what's coming up next. So now I want to take a second to talk about some of the incredible growth rates of the tiger bass. And the last two times we've been out fishing, we've caught a four pounder, and this most recent trip, a three and a half pounder. But just to put that into perspective, we raised Bonnie and Clyde for six to seven years, and Clyde only weighed three and a half pounds, and Bonnie was a little over five pounds. And we built the Crimson Oak Pond specifically for raising big bass. And since we're right here at the beginning of a new year, I wanted to talk about some of the reasons we've had success and have gotten these big growth rates. And as most of you know, we've tagged all of our fish and kept records of them in a database. And that really helps you key in and track their growth. And this past year, we introduced three new species. The first was tilapia, and then a couple of loads of big threadfin shad. And then we grew and raised about 10,000 prawns. And once they reached the adult stage, we fed them to the bass. But one of the success stories from last year was the tilapia. And initially, we didn't intend on adding tilapia to the pond this early, but we had an algae problem, and tilapia excel at two things, getting rid of algae and reproducing like crazy, which provides a lot of forage food for the bass. So adding tilapia was hands down one of the best decisions we made last year, and we got to see some incredible feeding from the overhead drone shots, because the tilapia are prolific spawners and spawn throughout the entire summer and fall, and I was very surprised at how much the bass keyed in on those small tilapia. I think some of it was because they have that pale color, and it makes them an easy target, but they're also a little slower than the small bluegills, so the bass would school up together, cruise the banks, and pick them off one by one. And the next thing we did was introduce freshwater prawns. And this was a lot more labor intensive. We started out with around 5,000 juveniles that were at the post larva stage. And a month later came back and added an additional 5,000. But the prawns were a little tougher because you can't just go dump them in the pond. You have to keep them in a separate pond, feed them a high protein diet every day, and make sure they have plenty of oxygen. But I think it was well worth it because one of the things we didn't see in our fish database was big spikes in growth until we added the prawns in late summer. But that was a really fun experiment and a very high protein source of food for the bass, so I'm sure we're gonna be doing it again in the future. And last but not least, around 10,000 threadfin shad. So one of the interesting things I found was that the bass really didn't mess with the shad during daytime. You'd see the big black clouds of them moving throughout the pond, but the bass were so focused on the tilapia, they didn't really mess with them until nighttime. And I think that the shad are just programmed to go in a circle around the night lights, which made it a lot easier for the bass to pick them off. And created a lot of those big topwater blowups, which we all love to see. But one of the key things I learned this past year is you have to supply forage for the bass during all 12 months of the year. Just for instance, the tilapia don't spawn in waters that are cooler than 68 degrees. So the bass really just feed on those in the summer and fall. And as you could see with the prawns, they had an even shorter window and were really only available about three months out of the year. And even though we stocked the threadfin shad back during the spring, the shad and bluegills are going to be the primary food source for these bass throughout the winter months. But by having the variety of food sources throughout the year, that's what allows the fish to eat or in some cases overeat. And a big reason we're seeing some of these incredible growth rates. So we did some experimenting last year and happy to see that those efforts are paying off and producing these big bass. 
But now it's time to talk about some much smaller bass. And in our last video, we caught two juvenile bass and added them to the new pond. And on the very first night, they found each other and started exploring the new pond together. So I asked you all to help us name them. And by far the most popular name in the comments was Johnny and June. So Sibley said, if those two bass are going to be lovebirds, name them Johnny and June. So Sibley, you're the winner of that contest. Give me your contact information and we'll get your package sent out. But we also added two rainbow trout to the pond. And there were several comments on that. One of my favorites came from Pretzel. They said you should name one of the trout Mike after Mike Trout. <laughs> I like that. But since there's a pair of them and a duo, we either need Mike and another trout name or a different pair of names. So I'm going to leave that contest open for one more week. You can leave those name suggestions in a comment down below. So one of my favorite things to do recently is film one of the most recent inhabitants of the Five Acre Pond, the family of bald eagles that have moved in. I've been getting a lot of cool shots of them as they hang around the pond, probably hunting for some of those tilapia and rainbow trout. But today you're going to be seeing some turf wars between the crows and the bald eagles. Even though the eagles are much bigger, the crows are pesky little birds and always in a pack and are constantly trying to run the eagles off. But if we take a look at our eagle tower cam, for a moment I was starting to think that the crows were actually trying to build a nest in the eagle tower because they're the first bird to bring any kind of limbs or sticks or anything other than a fish up here. So I was curious to see if they were building a nest or what was really going on. But as I watched throughout the day, it was harder and harder to tell. Kind of made me think there was a bug or something inside those sticks because it looked like they were just playing with it, not really building a nest. But eventually, the eagles reclaim the tower. It's funny watching them hop around looking for that comfortable spot. But just like most of you in the country, these past couple weeks we have had some crazy weather. A lot of really high winds and bad storms and tornado warnings. So the eagles have had it pretty rough. And you can see this one trying to dry its feathers out and ready to get some more sunshine. But if you missed the last video, we actually saw four bald eagles near one tree. So I think there's a couple different pairs that show up that probably live somewhere nearby. But one of the things I love most about the eagle is they don't like other fish eaters hanging around. So if you pay close attention to the island, a blue heron flew in, but wasn't able to stay for long because the eagle flew down and ran him off. And that's not the first time I've seen him run the blue herons off. For some reason, those two don't get along, and it's probably because they're competing for the same food. But the eagles use the tower during daytime, and Hooter and Al Capone use it at night. But watch as Hooter flies down to inspect the new pond that we call Cedar Falls. And as you can see, he's getting closer and closer to the water, which makes me wonder if owls eat fish. I know that their feet and claws are definitely strong enough to latch onto them, but I've never seen them messing with the fish in the five acre pond, so maybe they're just scoping things out. But the one thing I do know about owls is they love the sand. We got a lot of that sandy soil out here at the farm, and on more than one occasion, we've seen them taking the dirt baths. <laughs> and you can see him inching closer and closer to the beach. He probably found him a new bathing spot. But I'm happy to see the owls hanging out at the new pond. They were the original ones to show up to the five acre pond and have stuck around with us since. But speaking of birds that like to hunt for fish, the kingfisher is one of the best. And you can tell he's happy we stock Cedar Falls with the golden shiners as he flies down to get him some lunch. And today's cookout is brought to you by HelloFresh. And if you live out in a remote location like our farm, it's a perfect fit because they provide all the meat, vegetables, and ingredients for a full cooked meal directly to your doorstep. And it's very simple. You just hop on their website, pick a few meals out, and they have over 40 options each week. And for this week, I chose pecan crusted chicken, bistro steak, and chicken and bacon ranch pasta. And the thing I really love about HelloFresh is they provide a cheat sheet for each meal. So one side's gonna have all the ingredients that are included, but if you flip it over on the back, you'll see all the pots and pans and cookware you need to bust out. And then it gives you step-by-step -step instructions with pictures included that make it really easy to learn new recipes. And today we're gonna try out the bistro steak. It's the classic steak, potato, and salad combination. And you get started by chopping up the potatoes, and adding a little olive oil to them. Then seasoning the steak with salt, pepper, and garlic. And the first thing we're gonna do is pan sear the steak for a couple minutes on each side, then move it into the oven and cook it at 450 degrees for four to eight minutes. 
And we're also gonna cook the potato wedges in the oven at the same time. And while we wait for those to cook, we're getting the toppings added to the salad. And as always, I'm very impressed with the high quality ingredients. And walking through each step of the recipe was extremely easy. So I'm a big fan of HelloFresh, and if any of you are interested in trying them out, you can get free breakfast for life with code POGBASSFREE at HelloFresh.com. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. You can check out the link in the video description or scan the QR code, and you can customize these meals based on your needs and also save time and money by not having to go to the grocery store. And each meal takes 30 minutes or less to cook. It's going to be tough to beat that, folks. All right, getting started on the live stream for Cedar Falls. This is our underwater camera. These are some cool devices called a nano station that'll allow you to send a signal from here at the cabin out there to the new pond. I'm gonna do power over ethernet. It makes the most sense. Run it back to an MVR, then hopefully stream it to you all. Let's go get it installed. All right, about to install some underwater cameras and I may put one right here in this little cave because every time I come up to it, the smallest bass swims out of it, so that's where he's living at. But just to show you real quick the setup, we got underwater cameras that come back and they're powered up through this unmanaged power over ethernet switch. Got a temperature controller right there in the box so it doesn't get too hot. Then they're gonna come out of there and go to this nano station, which is gonna send it through the air over Wi-Fi back to the cabin where I'll connect it to a router and live stream it from there. So I just tested everything out on my phone before we get everything installed and it's working like a charm. So I'm gonna find a good spot to put these cameras, then work on clearing that water up and we should be ready to go. Hey, did you dig that hole? Hmm? Did you dig that hole? That one. <laughs> You're just a friendly little guy, aren't you? <laughs> He's about to walk right up to him. Here's my foot. <laughs> he said, You're the one that puts the peanuts out. I like you. So we got some new tools to help us with our pond cleanouts. This is an underwater vacuum that I've been pretty impressed with. So a lot of that clay and mud that got washed down into the pond gets stuck to these rocks. And there's a perfect shot of it cleaning the rocks off. And that's gonna make this cleaning process a lot easier. And I just saw some golden shiners swim out of our cedar log right here. We noticed it was hollowed out when we were putting it in the pond. So it turned into a perfect fish cave. But we've been doing a clean out on the new pond every couple of weeks. We're pumping that dirty water out of it into the drain, which flows right down into the five acre pond. So no water is wasted. We also been working on this overflow area because as the heavy rains come in, the overflow coming from Cedar Falls goes right down this area. And the last thing we wanted to do was erode through that clay blanket. So that gravel should help. But one thing I noticed is how quickly the algae showed up in the new pond. And I think this is called a filamentous algae, which we also have in the five acre pond. And I'm beginning to wonder if some of that's coming from properties in our well water, because in our backyard pond, we hardly saw any algae the first couple of years. But we've about got everything drained down. Here in just a minute, we'll be able to see Johnny, June, and Mike. There's plenty of bait fish still left in there. And as we're pumping that water out, I just use a water hose to wash all of that mud and dirt down into the bottom so it can get pumped out. And all that loose soil around the pond should settle in soon. So hopefully this is the last couple of clean outs we'll have to do. <laughs> you can always tell when there's a tiger bass in the pond because no matter what the conditions, it's always a prime feeding time. You can see him chasing those bait around down in the bottom. So right here at the end, I start pumping fresh water in. You can see it coming down through, draining in. That's nice, clean water. And then it's kind of forcing, you can see the flow of everything. The last of the dirty water getting sucked out of the pumps over there, so. There's Johnny and June hanging out together as always. But let's see who's hanging out over here in one of the fish caves. It's Mike Trout. Those trout really do have some beautiful colors. That's another reason I'm ready to get some clear water so we can start watching them on the underwater cameras. 
But if there's one fish in this pond that's been eating good, it's June. I can already tell she's gained some weight just in the past week. All right, the pond clean out is finished. I'm starting to pump water back in. And it looks 10 times better with that clear water in it. There's a quick overhead shot, and it won't be long. And that water should be just about clear enough for the underwater cameras for now. All right, time to go sink some Christmas trees. We had a pretty bad storm the other day that even blew some of my duck nest over. I'm gonna get those fixed. Also got the well water running right now. That water is about 70 degrees. And I'd say the pond is somewhere in the 50s, so may do a little fishing here after a while and see if that warmer water is drawing them in or maybe even this new Christmas tree. So I always drop the Christmas trees off right here around Alcatraz Island. And that was last year's Christmas tree, and that was the year before. So that'll always tell us how many years old the pond is. You can see they hold up pretty good. Still got all the limbs. There we go. Perfect little spot for those bait fish to hide out in those limbs. All right, it's been a little while since we caught a bass, so we're going to do a little fishing today. Most of the bass should be hanging out in this deeper water, so we're going to go with the underspin. And if you're not familiar with it, every time we catch a bass, we scan it to see if it's been caught before. If it has, we'll weigh it and update our database. If it has not, we'll inject a new pit tag into it. And that'll help us track them and keep up with their growth. Let's see what's biting. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's a big old bass right there. Nice, hit it kind of right there at the bank. Wash the dirt off. Man, that's what you want to see. Three pounder for sure right there. Big old bass. Man, I love it. Alrighty, another big female that has never been caught before. 17 and a half inches long. And its tag is going to be 569701. All right, moment of truth. 3.37 pounds. That's incredible. That is exactly what we were after today. Man, I love to see it. All right, I'm going to get her back in the water. That's what you want to see from a year and a half old fish. <laughs> yes sir healthy fish another nice fat fish all right this one's been caught five seven one zero nine four 16 inches and weighs 2.49 pounds two and a half pounder catching all big ones today So this fish is named Van Dam, and the last time we caught it was back in August, and it's gained about three quarters of a pound since then. So I figured out a pattern with these past couple fish. So if you guys remember when we built this dam, it sloped down right here, and they're sitting right at the deepest part of that slope. And that allows them to move up and down the water column throughout the day, and they're just using that as an ambush point. So when these threadfin shad swim by, they're picking them off, and the swim bait's doing the trick. Got him. Feels like a good fish. Oh wow. This is a big fish. I got a foul hook something. Has to be foul hooked. Oh, I got a tilapia. Hooked it in the head. <laughs> You're in the top. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> Looked on the top of the fin right there. Thing has been eaten. Eating all that algae, eating those pellets. That is a chunk of a tilapia right there. Looks like it might still be pregnant too. Laying eggs, that's what we want. Alrighty. Man. So I think those tilapia are stacked in there where I'm pumping that well water in because that's about 70 degrees and this pond water out here is in the 50s. So I keep feeling some thumps as I'm bringing it through there. I think I'm just hitting a big school of tilapia. So it's interesting. This is the same kind of string algae that is growing in the waterfall. 
up there in the new pond so it's not a good sign you don't want to see that but for some reason that grows every winter here in the pond down there on the bottom in the deep water so it's not something that sunlight is affecting but that's not something i want to see out here in the pond got him fast little guy another nice healthy one using my new technique casting parallel to the banks all right this fish has not been caught 15 and a half inches and its new tag is 570687 and it weighs in at 198 so i hadn't shown you the updated spreadsheet in a while you got the fish name on the left the youtuber that suggested that name on the right and then all the catch data out beside it and we still got about eight spots that are open so if you see a letter that doesn't have a name out beside it that's the last chance to join in on this contest but a couple fun facts from last year Apollo wins the award for the most aggressive fish, as we caught him five times, and then Yoshi and Lily were racking up the awards, and at the time were the fastest growing fish, but since then, we've gotten two or three that are much bigger. All right, back out here at the peanut picnic table, we got apples, strawberries, pecans, peanuts, sunflower seeds, pineapple, and tangerine. Uh, Thanksgiving feast for the wildlife. You know, the more and more I watch these crows, the more entertaining they're getting. And these guys are trying their best to figure out how to eat a pecan. Some of them are eating the nuts right away. Other ones, I think, are trying to pick up as many as they can to carry it somewhere to store it for later. We got a big cold front coming up next week. I'll be interested to see if the waterfall freezes. And look who we have, George Jones Jr. So Jr. actually still has some black fur left, but here's a good shot of George Jones. He's almost white as a ghost and has a crooked tail. <laughs> you can't miss him. But you can see even Junior's taken after him. Got the same little crooked tail. And Mr. Longneck caught red-handed. And one of the bandits stopping by to see what's left. And there's not much. Crows are back at it as the storm's rolling in. But this was the night the storm was coming through with the potential of tornadoes in the area. And Junior was getting blown around the table and he said, I'm out of here. White oak trees leaves are completely red now. That's a pretty color. I've got to keep these on them for a few more weeks to protect them because the bucks are in rut here right now. So they love tearing up trees. Hey, and look, you can even see where they started a scrape right here. Looks like a pretty fresh one too. But speaking of trees, this is what they did to my apple trees. You see, broke it right in half and then used that little stem to rub on it. <laughs> so I put a trail camera up right there at the broken apple tree to see if we could find the culprit. We got a lot of deer passing through this area checking in on the scrapes. This was our first potential, but I don't think it was him. And if I had to bet, that was our culprit. He stopped to pee right there on the scrape. And they're pretty much in the prime rut right now. But let's check in on the Bonnie's Bayou cam. We got a nice buck walking across the pond one night. And then a family of deer, even including a little one, passing through during one of the storms. And the raccoons are back feeding along the pond's edge. And we got lucky this night. The storm passed through with no tornadoes. But as I mentioned, the crows are getting more and more entertaining. They're messing with a young buck we call Spike Lee. There's a group of bucks all hanging out eating together, which is pretty rare during the rut. But you can see here they're starting to fight and get those swollen necks. And <laughs> we even have a deer laying down in the background over there eating. And usually when they start grouping together like this, we're going to start seeing some fighting. And there we have it. Two of the younger guys having some turf wars. <laughs> and Spike Lee just having a good time out here trying to figure out what a raccoon is.
All righty, it's time to feed Mr. Tiger. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks again to the million of you that are subscribed. It truly does mean a lot to us. But for those of you that aren't, make sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along with all these pond builds and wildlife adventures. Hope you all had a happy new year, and we will see you all next time. Thank you.